All right, everybody, welcome tonight to the Motives Marketing Business Plan. Um, my name is Maliva Epperson Langle. I'm a freelance makeup artist from the Reading area of Pennsylvania, uh, and I've been using our brand professionally for 11 years. Uh, I do makeup for film and television. I also do some bridal and boudoir on the side. But what I'm really passionate about is building the residuals behind the beauty industry and sharing with beauty focused people, whether you're an industry professional or whether you're just a woman or a man that really likes makeup, how to build residuals in that division. And so that's what we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, so one moment, I'm going to share my screen here and we'll get started. Okay. And if Debbie, could I have you unmute for a moment? I just want to make sure you can see my screen or anybody if you'll unmute so I can. Yes, I can see your screen. It's perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much for the help. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So tonight we're going to be talking about Motives by Lauren Reidinger, and it is one division of an, an entire global product brokerage company. Um, and we just had Brashante hop on. So whenever you have a second sister, just turn on your camera and unmute yourself and you can join in. Um, and so what's really wonderful is that even though we're going to be focused on more of the beauty side with the cosmetics and skincare, understand that we're just one division of a global product brokerage company that you have access to as well. We're going to be focused on the side of things. So our mission statement really is about people empowering people. This is from Lauren Reidinger, our creative director. Our business affords the ability to make people look and feel better while achieving the lifestyle they've always dreamed about. And isn't this like, whether you're a beauty professional or whether you're a lover of makeup, isn't that what we desire? We want to create a lifestyle that we enjoy and be able to pursue what it is we're passionate about and be able to make a living doing so. And so I think that's what really makes our business unique and tangible, not just for industry professionals, but for the average person as well. And Kelly, I'm just also gonna mute you real quick. Sorry. No, you're fine. Okay. So why the beauty industry? And listen, I don't think we really need um, like numbers and statistics to back up the fact that we are a relevant industry, but it's just cool to know that there are numbers that back us up. Uh, so beauty is a big business. With the beauty and cosmetics market today, we're estimated around $445 billion in annual sales worldwide. And that's a total revenue of 62.46 billion in just the US. So the United States represents 24% of the global cosmetics market. That's almost a quarter. That tells me that there is a huge consumer market of beauty in the United States, which is really important. And this wasn't recently, but um, I'm, I'm interested to talk about the way consumers of beauty is changing because it is looking very dynamic, uh, different post pandemic. Um, but what was interesting to me is that close to half of people buy their cosmetics online, which I'll be honest was really surprising to me because it seems like in the age of like Sephora's and Ulta's and beauty testers that people like to go out and try um, and be able to see and touch before they actually buy it. But close to 50% of people are already buying their products online. And so moving forward when in like testers and samplings and all of those types of products are getting, they're being rid of, um, and that's really interesting. I just received an email from cold corporate saying that they were getting rid of all beauty testers. So even more so now it's kind of taking away that barrier to entry because people aren't going to be able to, to consume beauty the way they were used to that 50% that were in stores. And so we're also a solution to that in that we have our own um, supplies, our own kits that we only handle. We're very strict with our sanitation. <laughs> it's like a free play in my studio. Um, and so I think that's really important being able to offer that value and a solution to beauty consumers outside of our industry as well. So that's just kind of layering on extra value that we already had built into our brand because of the way consumerism is changing in the United States. So that's really important for those that, you know, weren't aware of that, know that it's going to be very different moving forward post pandemic time. But if um, you but think about um, the people who, the 50% that are used to consuming online, um, just think about all of the Instagram and social media and all of the small indie brands that just start out. A lot of them are not in your department stores and a lot of them are already based online. So a lot of the consumers 
find them via social media and via um, YouTube from people who are promoting the brand and then they go ahead and consume it based on personal referral. And, and that's a part of our business as well. Great point. And just think about it, why don't we um, introduce you, Brashanti? <laughs> so <laughs> this is my partner. She's an amazing, amazing beauty industry professional, esthetician, brow expert, um, based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Brashanti, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Vershante. Thank you for the introduction, Maleva. I'm sorry I was a couple minutes party. I really was rushing home from taking clients because at the studio, the Wi-Fi um, is not the best. So I wanted to be on Wi-Fi to make sure that I wasn't turning into a robot. Um, <laughs> so that um, I just recently opened back up um, post-pandemic, but I also just opened a brand new studio. So um, that's all of the wonderful things that she said that I do, those are the things that I do. And I'm here to help and support you guys and just get you all the information that you need. So that's me. Hey. <laughs> and what I do love about Vershante, she's such an amazing asset because she loves and values education, but she's also really passionate about equipping not just students that are going through cosmetology school or aesthetic school now, but also equipping industry professionals with a backup plan, with residuals that they can build as an extension of their brand. And so it's really wonderful to be able to do things in tandem with her because we have very different backgrounds. Me as a freelancer for film and TV, and then her actually owning a studio and doing a lot of aesthetics services and being in the salon and the school environment, you kind of get great two sides of the coin, which is awesome. Um, so let's talk about something that the beauty industry doesn't have unless you are an owner employing others. And then that also has its own set of headaches, right? But let's talk about leverage. So as a beauty advisor with our brand, you can position yourself not just in the middle of this purchasing power. We talked about 25% is the United States alone, not to mention that we actually own a global product brokerage company with the ability to ship and have customers in over 200 countries. So that's just kind of like we, the whole world is our oyster when it comes to this business, but also positioning ourselves to instead of being competition with each other like is normal in the industry actually be able to work collaboratively but also get compensated as such which is really important so listen the profits of the, the global beauty market have to go somewhere and the marketing and advertising dollars that a lot of these companies are paying getting their products to shelves more and more companies are realizing they need to change the way they're marketing and advertising, how they're using those dollars. And more often than not, now those advertising dollars are getting reallocated to businesses that are creating the influence. So that's something else that you're going to see, not just social media influence, but the peer to peer, peer reviews like Rashanti was talking about with a lot of these smaller beauty brands. People are seeing influencers, someone on Instagram, a friend using it, then saying, oh my gosh, I love this product, and then they go and purchase it. More and more companies are reallocating mass marketing dollars to pay those types of uh, referrals. And so that's neat that our business is also positioned at the front of that, because that is exactly what we do, is peer-to-peer -peer review and social reviewing. Mm -hmm. So... We offer the absolute best products in the marketplace because we are a broker. And what I'm passionate about with this brand, with Motives Cosmetics, is that we're kind of a microcosm of that product brokerage concept. Uh, and so what I mean by that is that Lauren Ridinger, the creative director, rolls in very influential circles. So just like we have our best friends and our sisters, um, she does as well, except they're like Jennifer Lopez and Ava Longoria and Alicia Keys. Like, how wonderful. Um, and so what she did was she, when she was rebranding this collection, she went to those friends, to their professional makeup artists and said, listen, I want you all to tell me, get out your professional kits, tell me who makes the best in your opinion of each brand. And then she went to each of those manufacturers and signed exclusive contracts for exclusive formulations and rebranded it all under Motives Cosmetics and made sure it was skincare. So understand as a broker, not only do we have access to only the best of the best, but we also move with trends in the marketplace and make sure that we're relevant. And I'll let you type in, uh, chime in Vershante because I think that's really powerful and important to us as freelancers. So I would love to get your opinion on that. So with moving with the marketplace, it's very, just think about, for one, I want to backtrack. Think about before 
before we were really into social media, there was no job title called influencer, right? Like nobody really were was saying to you, ask them what they did and they said, oh, I'm an influencer, whether it be social media or whatever, but that is the platform that we have to um, influence mass markets of people, right? And then moving forward into having a product line or building a product line, okay, say if I invest, all of my time and money into building an entire product line as a makeup artist because once you started start to do makeup you realize okay i'm i'm really advertising for these brands or any beauty service right whatever you your tools your kit whatever you're using you're advertising for those actual products right when you use them because you know if this person has this type of hair what's the go-to product for that they don't necessarily know that. So then they're like, oh my God, that product worked amazing. What is it? I need it, right? And you recommend them to have it even if you cannot make any money off of it. So your influence off of your skill set is making those brands money, but not necessarily you. But if you transition and say, hey, okay, I'm going to make an entire line for myself to use, right, in my, in my profession you make this line but do you really have all of the tools the money the support that you need in order to build that in order to to leverage it in order to move it fast enough that when mm -hmm. the market shifts you can shift with it or will you still have outdated products that are no longer current and relevant in the time so it's just it's very it's a hard thing to do and you really want to have um, the proper tools and support in order to do that if that's going to be what you're going to do but also thinking okay how do I get there if you're not ready to do that so those are things that I think about and I teach about um, to people that I work with because it's important to you know we are very creative people as um, people in the beauty industry and not all the time do we know all of the business parts of the things that we imagine but we imagine it right we see it we are like oh this could be wonderful this could be awesome but it's so much like business and paperwork and logistics that goes into it so having a company like this that can do both really helps us absolutely and that pivots perfectly into that we are the creme de la creme of cosmetics or we wouldn't have it as a broker and like Rashanta was saying like having a business like this at your disposal saves time and money because you're only offering the best of the best. You have products that have been hand selected from over a dozen different manufacturers. And that's just in this brand alone, not including all of the different industries we have products in. And they're offered at a competitive price because we move right from the manufacturer to the end consumer and we pass that savings along to our customers. So I like to say from a motive standpoint, if you haven't experienced the brand, we're very much um, the quality point of say like Chanel, a Dior, a Bobby Brown, but price point wise, we're a little less expensive than Mac. Uh, and so that's kind of just gives you a great like feel for the brand if you haven't had a chance to experience it. But also you have access to other high end exclusive products within complementary industries. I'm a freelance makeup artist, but skin is huge for me because I only know that cosmetics are only going to work as well as the skin I'm applying them on. And if we go even further than that, we know that our gut detoxes through our skin. And so having wellness products that support our gut and probiotics and enzymes to help all of beauty, not just what's going on on our face, um, work well. So the ability to add more value and position us uniquely in the marketplace as beauty professionals is having access to all of these different industries that we can add more solutions and add more value to our clients, which keeps us more relevant, but also builds that loyalty. So let's talk um, a little bit about some of the things that we have access to. So people are already purchasing cosmetics. We get that. We have 25% of the market share globally. But our goal is to transfer where and who they're buying those products from. So a couple different things that we have access to. We have a motives welcome guide. Like Vershante said, you know, we're very much right brain. We're very much the creative for the most part. And this isn't just industry professionals, but these are those that kind of gravitate towards makeup as well. So sometimes like the business template or the business plan can kind of escape us a little bit because we want to be free spirits and build our relationship and, and build our craft and not worry about the other things. So with the motives welcome 
guide and the business behind us, we have that structure at our back where we don't have to recreate the wheel. We don't have to research it. We don't have to find it. It is there and built for us. And from a business plan standpoint, it tells us what do we have to do? Why do we have to do it? When do we have to do it? So that we can create the income to create the lifestyle we desire. So we can really free up our time and energy to focus on our clients and our craft. Um, we already talked about, we have high-end prestigious brands at affordable prices. We are a very customizable cosmetics mm -hmm. line, not just in the solutions that we can provide our clients with the brands, but we actually also have customizable products. So behind me, if you can see here on my left, you're right, I had to think about that. Um, we have a custom blend system to create therapy foundations, powders, and other cosmetics from scratch. So if that's something that's really uh, exciting to you and you're kind of science-based and really like color theory, that could be a very exciting division for you to add to your brand that's completely customizable and has pretty high retail profit margins built in. We are meant to complement every age, skin tone, and skin type. Listen, I don't care if you're super fair or super deep skin tone, you deserve to have yourself reflected in the marketplace. And I think that there are so many brands out there that don't do that. So to have a brand that is very inclusive is really important, especially when it comes to our custom blend system, because we can create for anyone. We're perfect for all occasions, whether you're just like slapping on makeup five minutes before a Zoom presentation, <laughs> like just now, or if you're walking down the runway or on set uh, doing bridal, like anywhere in between, we're meant for any occasion. And we're also very pigmented, which is important, especially as freelancers, because less is best, which means our products can go further, which saves us money. Um, but also it's great for in front of the camera. So whether it's a fashion show, a photo shoot, or high definition television or film, this product line backs that up. So it's kind of great for us to have a go-to line that we know does the trick for anything that we need it for. Very true. Very powerful. Anything else you want to add to that? You know how I feel about custom blend. So custom blend was really what uh, attracted me um, before even looking at the business or any really any other products. It was really something that pulled on my heartstrings because if you ever have done makeup, you know, or even travel to do makeup, you know, you cannot take everything. You, you know, I, it's funny because we always joke, like when you first start out as a makeup artist, the goal is to literally lay out a whole, like a whole platter of makeup. Like you want to look like you're a makeup counter. And as <laughs> you get more experienced in makeup, you and as an artist and you're traveling you like want to have the tightest kit as possible like if i can have five items in service a hundred people with five items i would feel like such a boss like oh my goodness you <laughs> won't believe what i just did with five items you know what i mean so having a system like this where you are able to customize something for so many people but also not just in that moment and in that service but bottle it bottle it bottle it up and have them take it with them is such a powerful thing because so many people struggle with find, finding the right foundation I mean they compare it to finding jeans like finding denim and finding bras for women like we have such a hard time with those things and foundation is one of those things that we have a hard time with <laughs> that's amazing yeah it's, it's so true oh my gosh let's not go down the rabbit hole of bras <laughs> Because it's devastating. <laughs> I love that. And it's so true. Listen, like when you find that perfect foundation, like you don't go backwards. You know, like you are so loyal to that product for life. And the neat thing is if you're the one that's able to provide that to someone, then they're loyal to you as well, which is great. Um, so talking a little bit more about that division um, that we had talked about. So we are one division of an entire global product pro brokerage company. We call our parent company called Market America. It's financially strong. We've actually um, had over 29 years of solid growth. We've just celebrated our 29th year a couple weeks ago. Um, so that gives us the ability to leverage other billion dollar industries to offer your clients, but also for yourselves, because we're all consumers of products to live as well. Um, which gives you better products at better prices. And we also have a global presence with different training and support. So listen, like if you have um, a makeup artist friend that lives in California or a makeup junkie friend that lives in England, 
we have access to trainings like this to help support them where they're at geographically without ever having to leave our like hometown. And so the ability for you to leverage the power of what we have globally is huge when it comes to like visibility and presence. We have all the tools there so you don't have to go out and find them, which is wonderful. That's the, the power of it being like a franchise is that you get to plug into something that has already been figured out you get what i'm saying if and if any of you yeah. all on here are entrepreneurs you know how hard that is like when you start a business there's really no one to tell you what or how to do even if you're paying them to mentor you you get what i'm saying because every every business is different i've had several mentors for for different things and different parts of my business because they can speak to different parts of it but having something that's like okay this is this is what this is this is how you do this this is how you can build this and being able to plug into it it really helps all of the different aspects of your business because for me as like I said as an artist I, I'm really creative anytime I have to do anything technical or businessy I literally I have to coach myself like you can do this <laughs> you're strong you're powerful because that is not my strong suit like that's not but if we're talking about math in order to mix up a amount of products like my brain goes off like this but if we're talking about math for some other reason i'm like huh what one plus one? Oh, oh yeah yeah one plus one i got it you know? so it's just like because of what you're applying it to so having something that really helps you it, it really builds you in the other parts of your business as well and in life that's so funny it just reminds me my husband yesterday was talking to me about numbers with his business and i was like babe i'm gonna let you talk at me for 10 minutes but just know that i'm not comprehending anything you're throwing at me actually i'm like smelling smoke right now so many numbers <laughs> you're throwing at me <laughs> yeah. um, but once again that's a beautiful thing like you said about having something built for you because you can play to your strengths without having to worry about weaknesses because the support is there to handle where you're weak um and i love that so just a little bit more about the company like i said 29 years old we were founded in 1992. Um, market america worldwide is a global product brokerage and internet marketing company and it specializes in one-to-one -one marketing that peer review that relationship marketing we are headquarters in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they employ 850 people globally. Uh, what I am proud to say is that like 99% of our products are sourced and manufactured here in the United States. And that's really wonderful right now. Also, when you're talking about a global pandemic and a lot of com cosmetic companies specifically are hemorrhaging money because they can't get their products produced because they're outside of the States. And with things shut down, especially in China, they don't have access to what they normally did. And so supplies are really short. We don't have to worry about that. So I think that's really important as well. You can see the countries in front of you that we operate in. But also, uh, I'm really proud of not only are we with the Better Business Bureau, of course, but we are actually an accredited rating, an A-plus rating, uh, rated business with the Better Business Bureau. And just to give you kind of like maybe something to compare that to, Amazon is a B, I believe. So just so when you kind of see the, the differences when it comes to the power of that accredited A-plus rating. Uh, we also won the Torch Award, which is an ethics award from the Better Business Bureau. We won that in 2013 for trust, performance, and integrity. But we're also the only company in the history of the Better Business Bureau from at least a network marketing standpoint that I know of that has won that award twice. So we actually won it again in 2018. Because listen, at the end of the day, whether you're um, like the everyday woman that's just looking to, to build something for yourself based on something you're passionate about, or if you're a beauty professional that's staking your reputation on a brand that you're looking to align yourself with, I think it's really important to look at the foundation of the company and make sure that not, not only is it financially strong, but ethically it's strong as well. And so I'm really proud of that. Financially, ethically, and long lasting, the worst thing is to get into something be using something building something and then have it snatched right from under you because you know for me that was something that was really important to me like i don't want something that's here today gone tomorrow you get what i'm saying so love that that's an excellent point i love that you said that yes longevity is huge what's the point of building something if it's going to be gone in five ten years and i think that's really strong too especially when you're looking to build 
residual income, you need to make sure when you're building something, especially willable, that it's there for the long haul. Uh, excellent point. And so we've done over 9 billion in sales worldwide. And that number at the bottom right hand side is a little bit more important because at this point, over 5 billion, over 50% of the company has been paid back to individual business owners like Debbie, like Rashante, like myself. Um, and so that's really important to know that I dare anybody to find a Fortune 500 or Fortune 50 company that pays over half of its profits back to its individual business owners. So really powerful. Um, we have thousands of unfranchised owners that earn anywhere between three to $3,600 a week. I like to focus on that number more than I like the middle box. It talks about we have um, over 500 unfranchised owners that have earned in excess of a million dollars. We call that our million dollar club in commissions alone, not including retail profit. Um, and we add a new million dollar club member every month. But I like to go back to the three to $3,600 a week just because the shoot straight with you. If someone's never earned $50,000 a year, it's kind of hard to imagine earning a million dollars a year. So I think the most important thing is to know that there are thousands of people making residual income with this business. Whatever that means for you, whatever that number is, just know that we can tailor an action plan in order to create that for you, which is powerful. So just briefly, I like to touch on this because I had never had this explained to me and still until I looked at this business. And what the 45 year plan, what this pie graph is just showing you, is that called a pie graph? Did I get that right? Yeah. I just took myself back to middle school, okay. <laughs> um, what this is showing is that the 45 year plan is kind of what we're taught in that we go to school, um, graduate, maybe get a higher degree or a, or a license in something, and then we go into the workforce, hopefully build ourselves up to the point where we're over 65, we get to retire and go on cruises and live the life, right? That's kind of <laughs> what the three, here's the problem. That scenario, the last generation I know that that worked for was my great grandfather who died two years ago at the age of 97 being a World War II vet. Great investments, retired at 60 and him and my Nana went on every Alaskan cruise, whatever, and lived the amazing life. Um, that did not work for my grandfather, is not working for my parents. And so uh, the definition of insanity is like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And so, I find that if we want to have something a little different, we need to do something a little different. And what those numbers are showing us in front of you is that 95% of people spend up to 45 years of their lives making a financial plan for somebody else's success or working um, their lives for someone else's financial success, not their own. Now, industry professionals, whether they're freelance or they're a salon or they've kind of taken that next step to try and build something for themselves. But at the same time, that comes with a whole host of other headaches we'll I'll talk about here in a second. Main one being that we're trading our time for dollars still. So the questions to ask industry professionals is, you know, what is the overhead of running a traditional business? If you're a studio owner, like Vershante doesn't employ anyone, but she is, a, she is a business owner. She owns a studio. She has overhead that's attached to her career. Does your income stop when you're not providing service to your clients? I guarantee you that 95% of freelancers or beauty professionals are going to say, yeah, I'm in that boat. Thank Can goodness I for residual income in this business or else I like wouldn't have an income right now. Go ahead. This is, this is, this topic right here is the topic that it is so important to me. Yeah. Um, and it's okay. So having your business and, it stopping the minute that you walk away from it is literally worse to me than having a job. Here's why. Because when you have a job and you have paid time off, you the day is over, you get to go home. You don't have to think about this thing until you have to show back up there the next day, right? But if you have a business, you have to be think you think about it all the time because it's yours. It's something that you have to take care of. It's something that you have to provide for and you're bought and chained to it. On top of the fact that if you don't set anything up, anything in place, I know so many practitioners that get to a point where they, they can't see anymore. Their hands are hurting, their backs are hurting because they, it will be the time I'm talking that he, the motorcycle guy is out. Um, their hands hurt, they, their backs hurt, they're tired, they can't 
fit as many people in their book as they could 20 years ago and they really need to take a step back but they can't you get what i'm saying or you really need to retire you really should be at home i, I hate when i go to like walmart and i see the older woman who you you look at her and you're like she definitely doesn't want to be here not because she's not smiling but because she's literally her body looks like it's gonna give out on her at any moment so aggravated <laughs> they're literally you have like, motorcycles i have a husband banging in the basement it's fine. <laughs> they're spinning in circles like i'm aggravated but um yeah so it's really important for for to create leverage for yourself so that you look you can plan something out into the future because if you're hustling and bustling to make the everyday things in your business work how do you have money to save how do you have money to invest into a financial future if you are at a traditional job and you are just dependent on a 401k what you're contributing and what they're contributing and you work all this time or a pension or whatever like who gets to dictate what that pension is not you who gets to dictate what the 401k becomes and at the end you know when you really need who gets to dictate when you get to take it and leverage it you get what i'm saying and how you get to pay it back it's so many things that goes into that that when you start to pay attention to it you see that it's a it's a setup for failure it's not it helps you, but it really is, it, it hurts you too if you don't truly begin to leverage it when you have the time to. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because it becomes a time that you need it. And it's like, if it's not built and you can't pull and you can't use it and you can't leverage it, then what? People are getting sick left and right. You get what I'm saying? And they need to sit down and they're sick and they need to really tune in and focus on themselves and, and getting well, but they have to be worried about how to pull a check in. They have to be worried about their doors closing down. I mean, there's this um, virus has been a, a it should have been to many people an eye opener. It's not just small businesses that were hurting. Oh no. Some of the biggest businesses, the, the ones you go spend money at every week, Every time they have a sale coming through your email, you're spending money that money with them and they're closing. Why is that? Why aren't they financially fit? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we have to pay attention to to this. Absolutely. And time to build a residual income is before you need it. And obviously we can't do that now for this pandemic, but there's going to be something else in your lifetime. It might not be a global pandemic, but God forbid if there's an illness or there's, um, there's a, a, a car accident or, you know, something happens. A like we storm. Yeah. We want to be positioned that we can ride through that storm um, without having to lose the lifestyle or like our, emotional health. Um, and so, okay, so that's one pain point, but also talk about staying relevant in an ever-changing industry. It can be exhausting. There's a ton of research. There's a ton of things that are changing. Like even our industry is different now than it was three months ago, six months ago, a year ago, constantly evolving. But also, are you creating or training your own competition? We talked about it earlier, but listen, if you're a salon owner or um, a spa owner, and you have employees in there that you train to be the best of the best for your business to be the best stylist they can be, there comes to a point where they don't want to be an employee anymore. And then they go and open their own salon or space or leave somewhere else with all of the training that you gave them. And now you've trained your competition. And we just kind of accept that as that's just how our industry is. But what if we could change that? And that's what we're here to share. There's also losing exclusivity with product. Brands that used to be solely professional grade product for professionals sold by industry professionals only are now cutting out the industry professional and going right to the consumer online through Walmart, through Walgreens, through Sephora, through um, Amazon. They're, so, I mean, 
and, and any solid um, like salon from a retail perspective would do about 20% of their revenue in retail. Well, that's been taken away to the point that so many industry professionals have gotten so discouraged that they don't even have a retail within them anymore. So what's powerful is being able to offer them some severe exclusivity where they can't get this product anywhere else and neither can their customers, which is really important to bring up when you're talking to anybody in our industry. And like V said, do they have a retirement plan? I mean, how long can you actually physically and mentally keep up with the demand of your industry? People's bodies start breaking down at some point. And I don't mean to be like super Debbie Downer here, but just to be able to understand those pain points, knowing that we have a solution to them is really powerful. So let's talk about our unique business model. We talked about the 45 year plan, right? Well, let's look at a two to three year plan for your own financial success. The opportunity to pursue your passions, create a willable asset. This business is willable to four generations. Um, professional training and support that you don't have to worry about giving yourself, but that you can actually take and educate yourself alongside other people that you wanna collaborate with at a very minimal cost. It allows you to be in control of your own time. You can build something that regardless of whether or not your hands are touching a face or a hair or a brow, that you can have money coming in that you've built. So build it one time, it lasts forever. Think of residual income kind of like royalties, like someone who authors a book or a musician that creates a great song. They're constantly paid on that play, even though it took them one time to make that song. That's residual income. We have the ability to leverage other people's talents. Look at me and V, very different backgrounds, um, both like personally and professionally, but we can collaborate together and we can lean on each other. And I know that there are people that I come across that'll be able to vibe better with me and vice versa. We can utilize each other for that and build something together, which is exciting. Um, and honestly, I can't read what the, Oh, a backup plan. It's like behind my video. And then creating a backup plan because listen, like if you ask an industry professional, like what their retirement looks like, a lot of them have no idea, you know? And so like I didn't, so that's important as well. But I also want to say like, sometimes that no idea is because we love what we do so much that it's like, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to do something else because I, I, this didn't work out like I love this you want to make it work you get what I'm saying so that mm -hmm. backup plan is just even it's not even just a backup plan but a supporting plan to help you be able to be and stay and be productive in the industry where you want to be where you feel most creative where you feel most in touch with with people and and that you are really sharing your gift you get what I'm saying love that I, that's excellent yeah I talked about the brokerage concept so we're gonna squeeze by that um, so there are two ways to earn income with our brand and our company. One is in retail profit and you have the ability to earn anywhere between 30 and 50% gross retail profit on any of the products that we have exclusively. You have the ability to offer multiple products and services, not just in beauty, but in all different industries. The wonderful thing is, listen, like I have a lot of men as customers. It's not because they're buying lipstick from me, although I would happily sell them a lipstick, but it's because there's also other products and services that we have that aren't just um, for like women or people that wear makeup. So that's wonderful as well to have that diversity in your portfolio. And you have the ability to create customers online and in person. So whether you do a lot on social media or whether you're more of a hands-on person, you have the technology and the platform to be able to support that. Um, but also we drop ship so you don't have to worry about having your hands on product and then having to turn around and give those products to a customer, which once again, in pandemic times, the less people handling the product, the better. And so know that you have all of the drop shipping capabilities. You don't have to worry about huge minimums and inventory and all of those requirements that you would have with other kind of pro accounts with other brands. The other thing, the other way we earn income is through the residual. So we have the ability to develop and mentor two teams of beauty advisors uh, that give us the ability to earn anywhere between $300 and $3,600 a week. This is the residual. This is be able, being able to collaborate and leverage other people's efforts. And I like to point out that while we are in the direct sales kind of market, we are not a multi-level marketing company. So we're not like a, like a Mary Kay or an Avon, but you also can't find us in stores like a Sephora and Ulta. So I just like to point out we're this hybrid business model. If we're like, if you took QVC, Amazon, 
and like Ebates and had a baby, that would be the technology behind what we have to offer. And then we have all of the products and the different divisions that support that. Um, so we're kind of more like marketing and advertising dollars being reallocated differently through a sophisticated tracking system. So there are five steps to building a business with Motives Cosmetics and Market America. And I'm gonna go through all five quick before we wrap here just in the next couple minutes. So step one is you apply with the company. This is kind of like signing your lease on the building. So you kind of get your space. Um, as an unfranchise owner, it's $149.95. That includes like a small sampling of product and gives you access to everything you see in front of you in addition to the ability to earn a residual income. So step one is we apply. Um, it gives you access to a business account that offers all of the marketing and support materials, customer management platforms, sales tracking systems. It basically gives you everything to ensure that you never have to hire an employee for admin. Thank goodness it does all the work for you and it includes a bunch of different accounts and websites that you have access to. Um, and then this talks about kind of like, this is just your business in a box. As a bonus with this kit, it's included a collection of products that we refer to as our top 10. So these are kind of top 10 products that every woman should have in her beauty arsenal, including some skincare and some health and wellness beauty supplements. All of that is included. This kit is, I want to say, probably a four or $500 value that you're getting for $149.95. You couldn't buy all of these individually to stock your kit, like your own personal makeup kit or your pro kit for that. Um, and so it really is a great investment. So step one, we've kind of signed the lease on our property, right? Step two is we want to now fill that space with the products that we need to service our, service our clients and customers. If you're not an industry professional, this is what you want to fill your space in for your own personal usage or for some of the clients or customers that you would like to help. So we create some volume. That volume is called BV business volume, and it's just a point value that's assigned to all of our exclusive products and services that calculate commissions. So in front of you, you see a few different categories, cosmetics, personal care, skin care. So a lot of these you'll see, maybe you're not passionate about them or create clients in those specific categories, but you consume them yourselves. Everybody washes their hair, uses styling products. Um, uh, takes a shower, hopefully, you know, like all of these different products that we consume ourselves, even if we're not using them hands-on professionally. So step three is we're going to actually purchase some of those products. So step one, we signed the lease. Step two, we figured out what we need to be able to support ourselves and our customers. Step three, we're going we're gonna to buy some of those products that we need to get started with. By qualifying our business, it opens these business volume banks that you see on the left and right side. The BV, the exclusive stuff, is blue. The IBV, the green stuff, is we have a whole different division of affiliate marketing with the company from an online shopping perspective. Please get back together with the person that invited you on this call to understand a little bit more about that. But just to keep it kind of streamlined and not confusing, we're just going to focus on the BV, the blue banks. When we purchase these 200 points worth of product, it opens up these banks to store all of the volume that we're using, that the customers using, that our business partners are using to pay us on collectively. So from day one, you have the ability to earn retail profit. There are a couple different ways to qualify. You can hand select your own favorite products to build your kit. Um, you could even go outside of beauty and select some, maybe some other products that you use in your household on a regular basis. You can use like a catalog or the online website to secure some customer sales ahead of time to share with them maybe about what you're doing and what brands you're aligning yourself with, or can't right now, but you could even host like an in-person motives trunk show or workshop where you can teach other people how to use and play with different products and give them that experience. Um, once again, like that's kind of not an option right now, but soon it will be. So there are a lot of different creative ways that you can qualify your business as well. Uh, we also do have a fast start program, which is another way that allows you to kind of qualify your business and get your site, everything set up at the get-go. Um, this one's a little bit more um, expensive of an option. Not expensive, <coughs> excuse me, not expensive, but just a little bit higher of investment because you're getting more products 
in that kit and you're also getting 300 points which qualify your business so it's like steps one two and three all in one kit you can once again get back together with the person that invited you to figure out which option is best for you so step four from step day one we have the ability to earn retail profit so any of your customer sales you have your discount on your personal usage all of that you have access to from day one once we activate, this is kind of the networking component of our business. Once we find other people that we want to build partnerships with, that we want to collaborate with, and they want to own a business as well, we now have the ability to earn commissions on all of the volume that we're creating collectively, all of those points. So in this instance, let's say you found two business partners, Mark and Kate. Now, from the residual business building side, this is our entire business model, what you see in front of you. Our goal is to help someone figure out what products they need to service their clients or themselves, create 10 to 15 customers, clients, whatever. Some people will have more. If you're an industry professional, you're most likely have more. But this entire business model is based around 10 to 15 customers that buy regularly. So we help people create some customers. And then we want to help them find partners that they want to work collaboratively with as well. And all the only thing that changes about this screen is the that your organization will tend to expand as time goes on. So the only thing that changes is the amount of people that pop up in the organization. And everybody has two sides of their business. So step five is we teach and mentor, coach, I don't like the word manage, I'm nobody's boss, um, and support others to do those same four steps over and over again. So basically rinse and repeat. Teach Mark and Kate how to transfer their buying habits to themselves, create some customers, find two business partners and as that unfolds we're compensated a hundred percent on all of the volume that's storing from infinity and above i almost said to beyond but that's toy story <laughs> so then a couple neat things that we have the ability to do when we talk about creating that um synergy those co collaborative efforts is that we have the ability to help each other's businesses expand because we only all build two teams and everybody that we build with falls in one of those two teams. So let's take me and Brashante for example. Um, what's wonderful about this business is that as I'm building my organization and finding new people to collaborate with, for example, today I just talked to an interior designer that she's really excited to offer the affiliate marketing as part of her brand with her interior design but also her husband is a real estate agent and we have a division of our company that's a great like software program for real estate uh, agents to use so they can build this business together the reason that I bring that up is I'm constantly seeing who I can help with our products and our business when they decide to partner I only have two sides of my organization I can bring people down we're not a multi-level marketing company we don't build wide and put people in competition we build in depth and place everybody together so when these people come on board this interior designer i can place them underneath Vershante on my left side and now a hundred percent of what that interior designer does with her business and her husband does forever Vershante gets paid on a hundred percent anything they use personally anything she uses professionally any client she ever works with for shanty's paid a hundred percent commissionable credit but it also flows up and credits every single person in that line another example is your senior partner we all have the ability to place our volume we can give it away to help as many people as possible so i've designated v as my person to give my volume to this month so i can look and see where she's at in her business any product that I use personally, any customers that ever buy anything, I can place that volume as far down in my organization as the last person I personally introduced that helps everybody in between. So I can give all of my volume to Brashante, it gets her paid and it flows up and credits every single person. It's kind of like helium, it flows up at 100%. I know Debbie's clapping, it's really exciting. And from an industry perspective, think about it like this that if Vershanti did a brow service that I got paid like I did the brow service even though you don't want me touching your brows <laughs> I guarantee that um or like I'm on set um painting faces for a film and it's almost like she got paid for painting faces on a film even though she's in Cleveland in her brow studio like that's the concept that we're trying to get across it's you might, if you're an industry professional, be thinking like, there's no way that can happen, but that's how we build. So that's what's really exciting about this model. And if you think of it from 
go back to when we talked about you let you creating leverage for yourself or think about when you really need a break from work and you want to take a vacation most of us the traditional in the, who work in salons and stuff the traditionally what we do is we fit all of our clients in right before we go on vacation so we're we add in extra hours extra shifts to fit everybody in then we go on vacation we don't you know, we don't answer our phone or we tell everybody while we're on vacation, we'll be back and we book them. And then we get back from vacation and then we're right, like literally straight off the plane, you're right back at work trying to fit everybody, their mom, their sister, and their cousin into your book again, because we are trying to make up that money that we lost. But imagine you go on vacation and you keep your books the same you don't you don't try to stress yourself to fit everybody in because you're not going to lose anything when you go you still are making money you're still making a profit you have checks still hitting your account and you can go and enjoy yourself on vacation or you can go take a class and not worry about okay yeah i'm spending money on a class i'm spending money on a flight i'm spending money on a hotel on top of the fact that i'm spending money for boot rent and i'm not there and i'm not making money you can actually go and do those things and still be supported and building your business both with a retail and a residual very powerful absolutely and so this is just showing that let's talk about how those points turn into money so every single week our system shuts down and searches for different thresholds of points to pay us on so it doesn't matter in this example in front of you if Ashley has a customer order that earns 63, like that creates 63 BB worth of product choices, or Mike over here is personally using some of his own products and services that make sense, like sunscreen, toothpaste, and a multivitamin. It doesn't matter. All of that pays us collectively at 100%. So the disclaimer is, listen, this all sounds wonderful. If you don't implement or change anything, nothing's going to change. Fair. So every single week, like I said, the system shuts down and looks to infinity on different thresholds of points. The first threshold it looks for is 1,200 points on the left and right side of group business volume. So this doesn't matter if it's week one, month three, month seven, week 47, it doesn't matter. Our volume rolls over month to month to month until we get paid. So it's not an if, it's a when and how much. So once we hit 1,200 points on that left and right side, that's the smallest check you can earn with the company, which is $300. Now that volume stays there, looks for an additional 1,200 points on the left and right side of group volume, bringing it to 2,400 on both sides. It's an additional $300 check. Volume stays there, looks for now an additional 1,200 points on the left and right side, bringing it to 3,600 on both sides, additional $300 check. Now it looks for a little bit more this time. It looks for an additional 1400 points on the left and right side, bringing you to a total of 5,000 points on the left and right side. Um, but they double your trek to $600 at that point. And that point alone, you've been paid on every threshold. This is in addition to your wholesale benefits. This is in addition to your retail profit. Um, so the volume resets so you can start to accrue it again. The IBV. So blue is the BB banks. The IBV works exactly the same way it shows it in green i'm just going to focus on the bb to streamline the process but just know that the ibv flows up the exact same way so whether it's home depot a discount gift card store macy's or some of our shopping annuity products it all flows the exact same way pays the same commission checks they're just independent of each other so you can earn a check in bb and not ibv ibv and not bv or both together it doesn't matter it's just when those different thresholds of um, uh, those thresholds, commission thresholds hit depending on the point type. Come on, it's like not, there we go. So, so then of course, as your organization expands, the frequency of these commissions will increase until the goal is for them to occur weekly. So let's just say Vershanti has been in business for a year and at the end of a year, it took her that entire year to go through that 5,000 and 5,000 pay cycle on BB alone. That means she's earned $1,500 in addition to all of the other discounts and her retail profit. Is it setting the world on fire? No. Could she have made more money working part-time at McDonald's? Yes. 
but our goal is we're looking at residual income. We have to build it first before it pays us. So let's say it took her that year. Now, when she had first started, it was just her, Mark, and Kate. Now, all of a sudden, at the end of that year, she has a small team. Do you think it's going to take her the same amount of time to go through that pay cycle again? No. Maybe it's eight months, then six months, then five months. The whole point is to get this cycling every single week, like clockwork, for a minimum of $1,500 in commissions. That's the business. Once again, coming on to the, the numbers, um, this might create more questions than it answers if this is your first time looking at it, and that is entirely okay. Please get together with the person that invited you so you can go through this again. I like to say the first time creates more questions. The second time you see it, you're going to see some things you didn't see before, and it's going to start coming together for you. By the third time you see it, if this is a fit for you, fireworks should be going off on the power of what you can create with your brand or your business or your life with this type of system. And for some reason, my iPad is not reading my finger anymore, so it does not want to move the slide over. Come on. I mean, that's kind of like the end of the presentation, but aha, there we go. Okay, so we do have an additional management bonus that we can earn, and that's just any time that someone on your left and right side goes through that final pay cycle the same week that you do. The company says, congratulations, you've directly or indirectly helped someone be successful. So they give you an extra $600, meaning the minimum check you earn that week is $1,200. Um, I like comma checks. I don't know about you, but a check with a comma in it is pretty awesome. Um, and so that's maxes out what your potential is per business that you own, meaning that it doesn't matter how much volume is happening in your business, we are only paid on 5,000 and 5,000 points a week, bringing your maximum um, earning potential per business to $3,600 a week. Listen, that's $187,000 a year. A lot of people stop there and they're completely happy and right off into the sunset enjoying their lives because most beauty professionals don't make that. I have not yet met a rich makeup artist. Um, but if you don't like the ability of being limited, you have the ability to earn more money because you can own more businesses. Um, they all fit together. We all get access to it from day one. I'm not going to cover it because I like to think of it kind of like motives in Market America 2.0. That's something that you can talk about in your follow-up. But just know just because your income per business is limited. It doesn't mean your income is limited. The top income earner in our company um, makes $125,000 to $150,000 every single month in commissions alone. So just so you know what is possible. So I'm just going to scroll ahead because we're also right at 8 o'clock. And this is kind of like next. So listen, um, I'm hoping as you went through here that you saw some things that were attractive to you whether that's being able to get products that you need professionally at a wholesale cost and being able to retail them, or whether that's um, building a residuals, a backup plan, a something in addition to your current business that can kind of keep you afloat, or maybe that's a healthy mix of the two together. Um, either way, it's worth it to get your questions answered. But there's one thing I can guarantee is, listen, like if you don't try anything or do anything different, then everything stays the same. So I encourage for the guests on this call, take a chance on yourself. Um, get your questions answered. Dive in. Maybe see this again with a couple people whose business sense you value or whose feedback you value. So you can get them to kind of take a look at this and give you their feedback as well. We're happy to do that for you. So your next steps, schedule a follow-up and get your questions answered. Try some products. Listen, like you can hear me and V talk all day long about how much we love these products and the brokerage concept, but that doesn't mean anything until you get your hands on the product as well. So please try some. Register as a customer and listen, worst case scenario, you can get some cash back on the, the products and the stores that you spend money at currently. And then you can also give the business a trial one. Let's um, share this with customers, maybe share some products with clients. We can share this business with some people whose business sense you value to see if this is worth building. And then we kind of have our answers at the end of the trial run process. Um, but listen, we'll meet you where you're at. So just uh, advocate for yourself. Um, and let us know where you stand and what we can do to help you moving forward. So I wanted to go ahead and open it up at this time. I'm going to end the recording and then we'll just answer any questions. So give me one moment while I end.